I'm Joni Martin. I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator located in Southwest Wisconsin. Thanks for joining me in my scrapping space. I'm here for another Man Card Monday. And today I'm gonna to share with you what I think is a simply stunning card made so easily with Enjoy the Journey Suite in the new April to January, January to April catalog. Thanks for joining me. Here's the Man Card Monday we're gonna make. Isn't that pretty? I'm hoping you can see the beautiful embossing in the background. Let me show you what we're starting with. We're using product from the January to April mini catalog. And on page 58 and 59 is the product suite called Enjoy the Journey. This suite has beautiful papers, some fun embellishments, some twine, and an amazing die cut set that I think you're gonna fall in love with. Let's look at the papers to begin with. So you get two of each of these, and these are those that we're gonna, I'm gonna talk with you about how to cut. So it's this one, look at the trees. This says water to me, and honestly, I'm not sure which way it goes. It might be one you could cut again, because these look more like clouds. This is a beautiful one. I just think these howlers scrapbook, but I'm gonna show you again how we can do a great card with them. Look at these pretty colors. And this is the one I'm gonna to use today. So I'm gonna set that aside because we're gonna cut it. But I wanna show you a couple more pieces from the suite that I love. We're gonna use a die cut from the coordinating dies that are called Greatest Journey. And let's see, you're probably getting glare from the plastic. So in addition to the biker that I'm gonna use, you can cut a tent and clouds, a runner, someone, um, holding a lantern, a walking stick, all kinds of things for outdoors. And then the stamp set is called Greatest Journey. And that's something new in this catalog. Both the stamp set and the die will have the same name, which is so much easier to coordinate pieces. This is not your happy birthday thinking of you stamp set. This has some great sayings in that I think it's the stamp set. Sometimes you're just looking for a saying like that. Not that I don't use happy birthday and thinking of you so often, but this is. Look at this mountain of thanks. You know, you're sending a, a little more masculine version of thank you. Wishing you joy in this next adventure. New job, high school graduation. We're in this together. You belong among the stars. That's a great thank you. This moment is the start of something great. Again, a new venture. And I'm so inspired by your courage. So I think it does say congratulations, um, thinking of you in just a different way. Okay, the other thing we're going to use for this project is an embossing folder called Into the Clouds, which Into the Clouds is an appropriate one for this type of suite, but I use it all the time because it gives a great overall background. We're going to begin by talking about cutting paper, and then we'll go from there. So this has some great colors in it, and I know which colors because I can look on the back of my paper pack. One of the things I love about stamping up is everything coordinates. So I have the colors in this paper are Mango Melody, Melon Mambo, and Pumpkin Pie. And I did this one in the Mango Melody, and the one we're going to do next on this side of the paper, we'll use the Pumpkin Pie, and we'll look at the differences. But let's first talk about a paper that has a border design on each side. When I'm using it for a card... And I know my card is going to use the design going lengthwise. I'm going to make the first cut with as long as I need this piece. And I need this piece five inches. So I'm going to cut five inches here. Then I'm going to cut the width. And I know I need this piece three and three quarters. So just a quick reminder on every time I cut with you, I remind you that your paper is going to be pushed against the lip. That's going to hold it in place. I'm going to make sure it's at the measurement I need and then cut pushing towards that lip so everything stays in place. And I can get from a 12 by 12 sheet, six card fronts. So I'm going to get three that I'm coordinating with the Mango Melody. And let's do that one more time. We're going to take the edge. We're going to put it against here and I need it to be five inches. So I'm making sure it's at the five and pushed against the lip and then I'm going to cut up and then I need it to be three and three quarters again pushed against the lip and cut up and that's how I'm going to get six card fronts 
from a 12 by 12 sheet of paper. This paper would also, I see some great scrapbook layouts because you could cut that as a six inch border and go half your paper. All right, paper is cut. I'm talking about cards, not scrapbooks here. I need to stay on task. So as I said, I'm gonna do pumpkin pie with this one. I didn't wanna go as pink as some of those and the pumpkin pie seemed to work with it very well. The first thing we're gonna do is cut out that little bike rider. And I'm gonna cut them out of black from the center of my mat. That then just save some paper and you're not gonna see it because it's covered by your card front. I'm gonna just move my cut and emboss machine here in camera range where you can see it. And because I'm cutting, I'm gonna use plate one. You always use plate one, plate two and two of plate three. So I have one. Here's two, and these are looking pretty gnarly, but that's okay. Honestly, if I, with, what was, we talk about the condition of our plates, if I'm cutting white paper that I'm going to stamp on later, then I make sure I have a nice clean plate. But for something like this, it really doesn't matter. So I have a clear plate, I have what I wanna cut, paper, then dye, then another clear plate, and we're just gonna run it through. And. You can run it all the way through. I'm gonna hit my camera stand. So I'm gonna pull this back, finish running it through. It's not gonna go very far because we're gonna emboss with it next. So that's missing from the center of my mat. And here's my little bike rider. I think this is a card you could use for so many occasions. Any of those occasions on the front of that stamp set, I'm just poking out the pieces. Let's get my paper back here. Like so. Isn't that great? All right, we're going to attach this to this. We'll get rid of all this for a second. And this is going to get attached to it. You can use whatever adhesive you're most comfortable with. I'm a big fan of our Seal Plus. It's like a really strong tape runner. I'm going to use a light touch. You don't want to push too hard when using our tape runner. And I'm just going to put it all the way around making sure I don't catch any of those extra pieces in between my card. I'm just gonna center that. Now that looks great just the way it is, but I think when we can emboss something, it adds a whole nother layer of wonderful. So let's take a quick second and talk about embossing folders. This is a thinner embossing folder. So on here, it's considered a standard embossing folder and it's gonna use one again in two threes, which are our clears. And when you put something in an embossing folder, look at what direction you want the embossing to go. And I kind of want the cloud look to go across my paper. So I'm gonna put it in this way. It would also work going this way. I just, for me, this looks like this. I'm gonna line it up with here. I'm gonna make sure my Stamping Up logo is on top and I'm gonna make sure fold first. When I closed this, I captured some air. And by going fold first, I'm kind of pushing the air away from my embossing folder and not fighting with it. So remember we said one and two threes. When you're using an embossing folder, it's the time to use those grungiest plates because it doesn't matter. Your paper's protected inside your embossing folder. I have something from my last die cut that wants to hang around. There we go. And then we're gonna run that through. Just like so. And I, again, I'm gonna back up, oh, just make a little noise because I don't wanna hit my camera stand. And let's see if we're somewhat back in the camera. And there we go. I hope you can see that difference. It's stunning. I'm gonna take one second and fold up my cut and emboss. I love that it takes up so little room on my work table. And let's make a card. Now we don't wanna make a card this amazing and then send it in a naked envelope. So I grabbed another piece of paper from that pack. It had that pretty, we were talking about the waves on it. On the other side are the colors from my card. And I'm gonna add that to my envelope flap. I cut this piece two and a quarter by six, but again, head to my blog. You can find directions for this card and lots of other cards. 
or I will have the link for the actual post in my blog beneath the video. So I'm gonna put glue on here. And because my envelope flap is smaller than the other paper, the glue goes on the envelope flap. You wanna put your, if you're gluing two sheets of paper together, the glue always goes on the smaller piece. It just saves getting glue where you don't want it. I folded my envelope back and now I'm gonna take this piece and push against kind of the back of that envelope, like the back wall. There we go. We're just gonna set that aside and let it dry while we assemble our card. I have here pumpkin pie, the, car, the color, not the actual treat. And I'm gonna use my grid paper to make sure I'm straight and I'm gonna fold it. Again, this card really is very easy to come together, but delivers such impact. I have set aside a white insert, but I don't know what the card's going to be yet. Sometimes I wait till I need a card and then add the sentiment I need. And because there's no sentiment on the front of the card, it can be used for so many things. So this I'll just add to my card later, you know, just keep it in there and add the sentiment when I need it. So now this is going to go here and see how that kind of pulls out those oranges. I'm going to quick grab this though. I wanted a tighter fold on there and the bone folder will do that. All right, so we're going to add this like so, and we're not going to see our cutout because that will that's covered. And then we're going to center it on here. Here's the little cutout that the die cut that we did. Doesn't that stand out on there? I'm going to grab dimensionals. And remember, dimensionals are little pieces of foam that kind of help your project stand up or stand out, however. They are sticky on one side and we have them in both black and white. I'm grabbing the black minis and I'm going to attach them just along here. So like, I'll probably put one there, one here, One here near the wheel. I'm just checking they aren't showing. I'll move that a little bit. And then I want one here. Otherwise I found that just kind of just stayed there. So I'm gonna cut one. And the easiest way to cut a dimensional is while it's still attached to the paper. So I'm gonna cut it like that. And that way this half one still stays there and I can use it later for something. Okay, so there's where my dimensionals are. We're gonna pull the backing off. We don't want those on our project. And especially in the winter when it gets kind of staticky, they stick to everything. There we go. And this one's being a little more difficult. We'll peel from this way. And there. Look at that card. Embossed, has some texture, mountains coming behind this bike rider. Don't you wish you were biking with this guy? My husband and I enjoy bike riding. The last couple of years have gotten kind of busy in our life and we haven't done as much, but that's our goal this summer to get back on those bikes. Okay, all I have left is to trim my envelope flap. And in a very short time, as you can see, we've created a stunning card. And it's a card for Man Card Monday, but I don't think it has to be a card that we just send to mails. Okay, check that out. And again, same piece of paper depending which side of the paper you use, you get a very different look, but equally as stunning. There we go. So this was from one side of that same piece of paper and this was from the other. Thanks for watching my video. I love, it's like a little bit having people in my scrap and space with me when you join me on a video. I appreciate it. If you like what you saw, maybe click that like button. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my Scrapping with Joni YouTube, this is your chance, hit subscribe. One more request. If you have some paper crafting friends who you think would enjoy my videos also, please let them know about me. Until next time, take care, stay well, and keep creating, it's good for you.